Welcome now to Culture at Work on the Business Radio Network, presented by Crest Insurance with host Matt Nelson. Well, welcome everyone to today's episode of Culture at Work in Tucson, where we uh, proudly presented by Crest Insurance Group, where we learn from and celebrate the local leaders, businesses, and nonprofit organizations who have stood the test of Tucson time. I'm your host, Matt Nelson of Crest Insurance, and I'm joined here at Tucson Business Radio X Studios today virtually um, by David Mason, President and CEO of really, I think, a, a local Tucson treasure, um, San Miguel High School. And Dave here is this month uh, is, is here this month to talk about the importance of purpose as a as a as a value and uh, and how that relates to workplace culture. So, um, by way of a quick introduction. Uh, Dave is uh, originally a native of Seattle, a graduate of the Woodring College of Education at Western Washington University. He holds a master's degree in history from Durham University in England and started his teaching career at Mount Lake Terrace High School in Seattle, Washington, before he came to Tucson, uh, where he taught at Catalina Foothills for nine years, after which he joined into San Miguel's parent organization, the Cristo Rey Network, in 2008. Um, Dave, I will actually ask you to fill in some color once you started at Cristo Rey, um, because I think that really leads us to a couple of great questions about what Cristo Rey is about and kind of what that means for the value at, uh, at San Miguel. So I guess, first and foremost, what got you into teaching? Yeah, that's a great question, Matt, and and, and thanks for, for asking that. Um, you know, I think like a lot of people, I had uh, some amazing teachers in my own life and in my own school experience. Um, and I got in probably why a lot of educators do. And um, teaching is a vocation. And um, because educators are called to this work, um, you know, I really watched and observed the best teachers that I had. And San Miguel's founding principal, Brother Nick, used to always say, he had a great saying, and it was, doctors save lives, um, but by God, teachers do too. And I really have come to believe that um, over the many years I've been an educator, um, and that's been a core concept in my journey. My first experience as an educator in the Seattle area was at one of the very first high schools to receive a Gates grant. Um, and in those days, it was a movement, um, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, provided grants to large underperforming schools uh, to break them up into learning academies. So it was commonly referred to as the school within a school initiative. And at that time, in the mid 90s, that was considered on the cutting edge of educational reform. And as a newly formed educator, out of Western Washington University, I was really thrown into this exciting environment of educational reform. And it's really remained in, in my blood uh, ever since then. Uh, and so, you know, when I learned about Cristo Rey and I learned about this unique model that's transforming lives, um, I was hooked right off, right off the bat. So let's talk a little bit about San Miguel specifically here. So San Miguel High School, I mean, it's it's a it's a Catholic high school. It's in the Lasallian learning tradition, and, and I, I do want to ask you what Lasallian means because that's something that I think a lot of people aren't fully familiar with. But really, you know, it's it's a it seems a very value driven organization. I mean, it's up on the website. You've got the five key values that that are part of being a San Miguel student, and you know, since two thousand four. San Miguel specifically here in Tucson, but this seems to be echoed across the entire Cristo Rey network, is really, it focuses on a couple of really individual differentiators. You know, one is, is I mean, the schools are all targeting uh, communities of limited financial means and communities where um, the idea of college for, for many of the, of the, the kids that grow up there, um, it's a distant uh, it's a distant goal, right? It's something that it's not terribly common. And San Miguel is, uh, you know, an example of that here in Tucson. It's on the south side of town. 50% of the adult residents uh, in that zip code don't have a high school uh, education. 
42% earn less than $25,000 a year. And these students come into San Miguel where they're taking a full college prep course load. They're holding a work study internship at the same time. That's how the tuition is covered through your corporate work study program. Um, and it's a rigorous curriculum. So I guess first question being, what's the, you know, what's the idea behind that? Because that's, that's like a triple aim. That's a, that's a big mountain to climb. Um, and to set that as your target market within the Lasallian kind of tradition, just what prompted that and, and what makes that successful? Yeah, there's a lot in that question. And, um, you know, I'll go, I'll go ahead and jump in and, and I'll kind of end with um, Krista Ray and, and Lasallian because our school is both. Um, there's an old saying, Matt, and I, I can't remember where exactly I heard it, but it's uh, talent is universal and opportunity is not. And I think that resonates with everybody that's associated with the mission. The students we serve at San Miguel, every one of them has the requisite talent and drive, but the only thing missing uh, is the opportunity and the resources to get to and through to college. And that's where San Miguel comes in. Um, you mentioned some very real statistics regarding educational attainment uh, for the zip codes that we serve um, in the neighborhood where, where San Miguel is located. But we believe strongly that a student zip code should never be a determining factor in a young person's educational or career opportunities, especially when these young people have the talent, all the talent in the world to succeed. Um, so first of all, when a student chooses San Miguel, we make very clear during the application process what the expectations are. So we require every senior at San Miguel to apply to 13 match universities. Um, and that's an expectation. Um, it's not only that students will graduate from San Miguel with a variety of college options, but that students will go on and graduate from college. Um, and by the way, San Miguel has a dedicated alumni support advisor that supports our graduates through their college experience. Wh whether that's a, at the U of A right across town or clear across the country at Georgetown University. And this only happens with a three-way partnership between San Miguel, the student, and the family. So I'll elaborate a little bit. San Miguel, um, you can count on San Miguel to have high expectations, uh, insist on commitment and effort on behalf of the student. Um, but San Miguel offers layers of support for the student and the family, including uh, academic supports, college and social emotional counseling um, for all of our students. And then in return, we ask the family to provide an ongoing encouragement um, and structure for the student and support through their active engagement uh, and communication with the school. And lastly, if you only look at standardized test scores as a predictor of college success, you might predict that our students would struggle in college, but they're persisting at rates significantly higher than other students from their demographic. Um, one of the hypotheses for this is that the work program that you mentioned is the X factor or the special sauce, if you will, um, because San Miguel students have to adapt and adjust to this corporate internship starting at age 14 they're being prepared to become self-advocates, uh, seek assistance and troubleshoot in a really challenging new environment. Um, so once they get on a college campus, it doesn't seem that daunting. But to circle back to the, the, the LaSallean piece, you know, going back 300 years ago, John Baptist de La Salle, the founder of the de La Salle Christian Brothers, um, who are the sponsors uh, and who run San Miguel, they wanted to provide the same type of opportunity for students in France. Um, and in those days, especially, that wasn't even remotely an option for young people that, that couldn't afford a, an education. That was something that was reserved for the rich and the, and the aristocracy. And, you know, fast forward 300 years, the LaSalle and Christian brothers are still providing that. Um, and San Miguel is carrying on that tradition. So one of the things I came across, and you know, in, in preparation for our for our discussion today, um, was a was a, a news release that um, it was from last year, and it said that San Miguel had a 100% college acceptance rate uh, in 2019, which I think was graduating classes. I want to say like 75, 80 students, something like that. 
um, which is something I thought was was incredibly impressive, right? 100% college acceptance rate um, is is a it's, a it's an impressive number. And then I saw further down in the article that San Miguel has had a 100% college acceptance rate since 2008, um, which Honestly, if uh, it, it's one of those things, there's somebody that told me that in passing. Uh, you know, I, I would almost—it's so incredible that it would, I would be, skept, be encouraged to be skeptical. I guess. Um, so, I mean, when you talk about setting the expectation, because it seems like that's a great avenue for us to jump over into this idea of purpose and and how the lessons you've learned at San Miguel could apply to the workplace. So, I mean, is that the expect, so they said the expectation coming in is that they're going to apply to these 13 match schools. Um, what, you know, what role do you think that, that kind of level setting on the front end plays versus kind of a culture and, and how you enshrine that value in, you know, kind of in, in their interactions with their peers and with their teachers and everything like that. How do you keep people's eye on the ball because I have to think that to maintain that type of momentum across, you know, basically we're talking here, what, 12 years, it has to be something that's above and beyond just kind of a, an agreement coming in. I mean, I, I, was, I was a high schooler once, and there were lots of things that I agreed to on the front end that I probably did not fulfill in, in the end, or at least not within my four years. It took me a while to come around to it. So what do you guys inculcate in the culture over there to keep that momentum going throughout the four-year education? Yeah, it's uh, it's really a culture built on on high expectations, uh, insistence, and support, and probably overarching all of those things is this strong belief in the abilities of the student. You know, going back to that original quote that I mentioned that talent is universal, but opportunity is not. Um, but we never ever lower the bar or lower expectations for the students. We're really, really clear about what the end goal or the ultimate objective is. And then we have a really clear roadmap on getting there. And we don't really sugarcoat or mince words. It's a lot of hard work and commitment on, on the part of everybody involved in that. You know, whether it's it's the family supporting the students or whether it's the effort that the students need to put in. Um, even our corporate work study partners who employ the students and support the students in the workplace, you know, it, it's not always easy. It doesn't always come naturally to the students. But this loving, caring environment and constant encouragement coming from all angles, um, focusing directly on the students, that really is um, an eye on the prize culture, if you will. You know, next week our, our faculty and staff will return to the school. And, you know, there's a lot of different circumstances with the start of this school year, but the mission hasn't altered or changed one bit. We've had to alter some of our plans. You know, we We've had to change a lot of things, but uh, the core principles that you mentioned and the belief in the students, the high expectations, and then the layer upon layer of support to help the students reach those high expectations will always be that, that rich fabric that's a part of our workplace culture. And then we celebrate. You know, we see the results and it's emotional uh, when we see the students succeed and, and achieve their dreams, uh, because we know all of the individual stories. We know every student that was close to dropping out when things were tough, but they stuck with it, and they stuck with it because of the, the workplace culture of the people um, that, that surround them, whether it's the workplace, uh, the school, or the home. So when you look at, and, and kind of jumping back to, you know, to your evolution throughout the educational system going from, you know, you, you, your nine years spent at Catalina Foothills, which is, um, I think it would be fair to say that, you know, students at, at Catalina in the Catalina Foothills district, I mean, it's, they're going to be well-resourced students, right? I mean, there's, there are things like you said that, uh, if, if talent is universal opportunity always, you know, isn't always universal. So did you know when you left, Cat Foothills to go into the Cristo Ray network, um, and eventually, you know, you went to Minneapolis um, first, 
and then uh, and then wound up here in to- back in Tucson. Did you know what you were getting into and and kind of you know knowing that hey we're going after certainly a different um, demographic profile I guess you could say with you know students and their access to resources. Um, but did you know about all the cultural hallmarks that were in the Cristo Rey system when you made that jump from Cat Foothills? And if you and if you didn't, how was that process of evolution when you made that jump? Yeah, thanks for asking that question uh, because I often uh, refer to that transition um, back in 2008 after almost you know 10 years at, at Catalina Foothills where. You know, the expectations for educators and students um, at Catalina Foothills District were, were very high and, and it was coupled with a high level of accountability. But I always knew that those two things could translate, you know, in the back of my mind um, to another environment. Um, so all of that was there. And I, and I often tell the story that San Miguel opened while I was at Catalina Foothills. Uh, and I was aware of this little school on the south side. You know, 2008 was the first graduating class of San Miguel, but I didn't know a lot about it. Um, I learned about the school through my mentor, um, Elizabeth Gettle, who um, had been a, a, a principal and assistant superintendent in the Catalina Foothills District. And Uh, It was really big news when she left uh, to become the second president of San Miguel. And I, and I knew her and, and I asked her about where she was leaving, you know, and she, it was a big deal. You know, she was a rising star in the district and, and this was big news. Um, And incidentally, she's now the president and CEO of the entire uh, Cristo Rey network. So it's really interesting that I followed her, um, you know, I'm now president of the same school where she was president. I worked with her for a number of years at the Chicago office, um, the national office of the, of the Cristo Ray network, but I'd learned of this school and I was fascinated and intrigued by it because of the stories that I'd heard. And because I really looked up and admired, um, Elizabeth for, for her leadership, as an outstanding educator uh, and leader in the district where I had worked. And it's so interesting because I never would have imagined that my journey would have taken me uh, all the way to the Midwest, you know, to open a Cristo Rey school in in Minneapolis, Minnesota. um, And, and then a couple years at the national office in Chicago, and then again, after almost 10 years, making my way back full circle to Tucson. But I knew as soon as I learned about this, two things. One, that I wanted to serve a demographic of students that had been historically underserved. And in my educational career, I was ready for a different opportunity and a new challenge. And that challenge was presented to me. Um, you know, little did I realize that, uh, I would travel all over the Midwest. And when I worked for the Cristo Ray network, I actually had the opportunity to visit every other Cristo Ray school in the country at that time and work with teachers and educators. And I had seen this model in action in different cities across the country and firsthand and seeing how it transformed the lives of students and not just for them, but for future generations and their family. Um, And I never looked back, Matt. I never looked back because I saw the magic and I saw how it happened. And then in 2016, when I got the opportunity to move back to Tucson, a a community that I had spent 10 years here and grown to love very, very deeply. Um, I had the opportunity to come back. I placed it in God's hands and I've been back for four years. Um, and it's absolutely magical to see the way it's grown and to see how it continues to grow and especially to meet, um, the product, which are, are the young professional adults who have graduated from our schools and from our universities and now work with our corporate partners, including Crest, I might add. 
Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. We've got um, we've got a fantastic uh, employee over here at Crest uh, who's a, a San Miguel graduate, and actually, um, on a personal level, one of my best friends um, that I, a young man that I met in the uh, in the army, um, was also a San Miguel high graduate, and um, it has uh, it really has blown me away. Uh, well, I'll put it to you this way. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to compete against your students for a job when I was coming out of college. I would not have wanted to compete against against Sam Miguel High graduates uh, for a job because uh, I have been absolutely blown away by the um, just the professionalism um, and and really just there's just there's a real dignity around um, you know around these young adults when they come out of San Miguel they they have such an incredible I guess center. I guess is the way I would describe it. And I'm actually curious about that center. Um, so you've got these five core principles um, that, that the organization is built around um, education, faith, social justice, respect, and inclusivity. And then you add in the aspect of, of work study as, as a requirement. So you've got this responsibility on the outside that, you know, again, the majority, I mean, I worked when I was in high school, but it wasn't something that certainly wasn't something that was a requirement of me to complete my studies. Um, it was, you know, just something I did to, to get some money, but I learned a lot from that. And so it's, it's actually really interesting to me that uh, a school such as yours said, Hey, we're going to make that an element of our curriculum. What, what bumps have you seen, or I guess I'd say what lessons both have you learned as an organization, but what lessons do you hear that your graduates are bringing back from having that kind of blended education and then application as part of their curriculum? And, and do you think that there's something that perhaps an employer could, could learn from that when they look at their development programs um, for employees that they're bringing in? Yes. Um, there is a, uh, a magical uh, transformation that happens uh, because of the unique nature um, of our program. Um, it's definitely this intersection between the local business community, faculty, staff, and students um, that that creates this um, this change. And and I'll talk a little bit more too later about it. It doesn't always click right away for the students. Um, but the key word here is, is investment, right? Um, there's a common glue that, that, that binds uh, these three groups together in the mission as far as form, formation of the students. Um, the faculty and staff have the utmost clarity in terms of supporting our students in terms of their classroom and workplace learning, but also their spiritual formation. I don't want to downplay you know, the fact that, that, that spirituality and morality and being a good person plays a key role in the development of our, our students as well. Um, the students are invested in giving everything they have uh, because of the caring, close-knit community and the layers of support that I mentioned earlier. But the idea that our local business partners are investing in this future talent pipeline um, of highly educated, reliable uh, workers uh, for their corporations, as you know and, and mentioned, you know, at Crest, we're, we're seeing it play out, obviously. Um, you know, I think it's not lost on the students, the level of investment that's being made. Um, last year, I had a great, a great, um, opportunity. I met up with one of our alumni, um, Mireya uh, Iglesias, who works for Pepsi Cola now. She's a rising star at Pepsi Cola. Um, she graduated, you know, a few years ago. Went off to Georgetown University on a full ride scholarship, and um, and then she's living the dream, living in Manhattan, living in New York City, working for Pepsi. And, and she says all these things, you know, we went out to dinner uh, in New York when I was back East and she said, if it wasn't for that corporate internship experience, uh, as far as her confidence goes and the, where she saw herself in the future, you know, her ability to visualize herself working in a fast pace, um, international corporate environment, like she's working in now, 
that that ability of the students to see themselves at an early age at age 14 in corporate offices being successful um, and being uh, ultimately in a position that um, is the culmination of all their hard work uh, and their dreams come true. A few years ago, I, I had the pleasure of speaking at a Sun Quarter breakfast and, and emphasize uh, to them uh, that we're making the greatest investment that we can make uh, in, in our young people. Um, these are Tucson's, the next generation of Tucson civic and business leaders um, and the funny thing is it's not complicated when the Tucson business community or any business community uh, is invested in providing this opportunity of meaningful real life work experience. It really inspires and catapults these young workers, um, not only through a college education, um, but to go on and, and achieve, you know, achieve great things um, in their lives and encourage others to do so as well. I really want to emphasize that our students, and I'm sure you see this, Matt, our students want to come back to their local community, but they want to give back and they want to encourage the next generation of San Miguel students to persist and succeed in the same way that they did. And they're willing to give back um, with their own time, uh, talent, and treasure. Uh, and so... I think that's that's the key here. I agree. I agree 100%. And that's uh, that that peer element. I mean, that's something that um, it really struck me again with the people that I've met who are graduates of San Miguel, and I've of course been to the campus and had the pleasure to to listen to some of your student ambassadors describe their experience. Um, a couple that were seniors that were mentoring, um, and was really struck by. I guess just that that level of commitment that they had to the to the young people coming after them. Again, it just struck me as so atypical of of you know what you would expect to see in any high school. Quite frankly, I mean that was you know if I use my personal experience going through high school, it was kind of a bit of a you know you had your circle of friends, and aside from that, it was kind of uh, you know every person for themselves kind of thing. So um, so it's just incredible to me to see just in a, in a, in a school environment, not, you know, not a sports team, not a small group, not a friend circle, but just a, a sense of needing to give back and help those coming after you, even if you don't know who they are, if the only relationship you have is just by virtue of the fact that they're passing through the same institution as you. It really, really struck me as, as something, um, a word you've used a couple of times, magical, that, um, it would be great to see replicated not only throughout the educational system, but, um, but also I think just, you know, across Tucson writ large, you know, where we kind of do look at it and realize, hey, you know what, um, we're all kind of in it together at, at some level or another. And so it behooves us to help one another, um, you know, kind of do better. So I, I really I'm impressed and commend you for, for the ability to, to keep that momentum going within your organization. So um, real quick, because we're, we're at the bottom half of the hour, let me just take a quick break. For those who are just joining us, this is Culture at Work in Tucson, proudly presented by Crest Insurance. As the, local, as the largest locally owned and operated insurance brokerage in southern Arizona and one of the top 100 insurance agencies in the United States, Crest is your hometown broker to assist you with commercial insurance, workers' compensation, and employee health insurance plans. I'm your host, Matt Nelson, and now back to our conversation with Dave Mason, President and CEO of San Miguel High School. So, Dave, tell me a little bit about your transition from educator to leader and, and administrator. And I know when you first came to San Miguel, you were kind of wearing both the, the principal hat as well as the president hat. Um, now I believe you have a principal in place uh, at San Miguel, and so now it's, it's president and CEO and, and kind of handling the executive side. What has changed for you, and, and when you're – talking to an educator about coming into the San Miguel system, you know, how, how do you relate your experience and try and describe to them what they're coming into culturally? Yeah, it's been a really um, wonderful transition into my current role. Um, you know, all of our schools have a, a president principal model and um, i would served in a number of different roles throughout my educational career, but you know, specifically uh, within the Cristo Rey network um, in Minneapolis, I, 
I, I, I was a teacher. Uh, I was a dean of curriculum and instruction. And then I also served as principal there. And then when I worked at the national office in Chicago, I was, uh, my title was director of school support there. And I meant, as I mentioned, I worked with um, the chief academic officer in terms of creating this uh, high level academic culture for all of our schools. At that time, we were developing a national curriculum, college prep, college going curriculum, um, and getting everybody on the same page for that. And the reason I bring all of that up is I think uh, it really prepared me in terms of the unique elements of this model. And being a lifelong educator, I think um, it helped me in my current position to really understand the challenges, but also the template of educational success with regards to teaching pedagogy, educational technology, integrated curriculum, all of those things that, that I'm overseeing now. Uh, the best way to think of the model is that my current role, president CEO, is really um, external facing. So, you know, this is a great example, joining you for this call today, um, being out in the Tucson community, um, meeting with uh, CEOs of local businesses um, to, you know, secure corporate internship opportunities for our students, bringing new people to the school to educate them on the magic of this program and um, my, my journey uh, takes me uh, into uh, the homes of generous benefactors, both in the Tucson area and well beyond, you know, across the country. We have very generous and supportive folks. Um, there are corporate donors and sponsors that I've become very close with um, in terms of collaborative efforts. Um, developing a strategic plan, uh, which I led that process a few years ago um, to really vault San Miguel um, over the next uh, few years. That strategic plan um, will end in 2023, and we're already making tremendous progresses, uh, progress in many, many areas um, with regards to that. The principal's responsibility, um, Mike Richards, our principal, is really the day-to-day -day operations uh, internally. And then Samantha Miller is our director of the corporate work study program. So part of our unique model is that you have a president, which is kind of at the top of that triangle. But unlike other schools, you have a, a principal who oversees academics and you have a director of corporate work study who's really on the same level as the principal on the org chart and we refer to that role as the principal of corporate work study. So it's an entire um, department within the school as far as the operations of the corporate work study program and sales and acquisition. So it's complex. So, and, and I'm glad you brought up kind of that, um, that bifurcation between, you know, work study and education, because that seems to be, the intersection of um, uh, an interesting evolution in education right now, where we're kind of, you know, as a country kind of wrangling with the, you know, the importance of education as a, as a function of, of work and vocation. And then, you know, the idea of, you know, kind of more of like a classical liberal arts type education. And we seem to be at a place where, you know, people are trying to treat them like they're, completely separate. I don't personally know that they are. I actually think they feed into one another quite, um, quite handily uh, when you start getting into critical thinking and things like that. But I'm curious to hear, because you're one of the few schools where you really have both missions, but with the stated purpose of continuing education beyond where you're at, regardless, you know, where you wind up, the, the, the expectation is that you don't stop learning after San Miguel. So can you talk a little bit about how you balance that? Because that does seem to be something that education um, as, a, as a segment of both our economy but also our country seems to be at this weird kind of fraction, you know, fra fractional point. And, and it, it seems like somebody like you could speak to why there's that potential divide and, and how to bridge it since you're doing it within your institution. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's always been fascinating to me. Um, you know, that you have 
kind of this uh, idea of, you know, some students will go on and, and pursue this more traditional um, academic liberal arts education and that somehow, um, you know, career exploration and, and real life practical work experiences somehow separate from that. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's so wonderful about the Cristo Ray network is that uh, the Cristo Ray model is, is explicit in that the two should not live separately. Um, there are 10 mission effectiveness standards um, that Cristo Ray schools uh, abide by. And standard six uh, speaks directly to this. Standard six says that a Cristo Ray school integrates the learning present in its work program, classroom, and extracurricular experiences so that we are always um, integrating the two. And that the corporate work study program is very much considered an integral part of the academic program in terms of the skills, uh, both soft and hard skills that the students are learning um, because they're transferable. You know, for example, uh, one of the skills that I'm, I'm talking about is this idea of teamwork and collaboration. Well, teamwork and collaboration needs to be utilized on a daily basis in the classroom environment, whether you're doing a lab experience, experiment, uh, peer editing, uh, an English essay, um, or you know, in robotics class and troubleshooting why a system doesn't work. You know, I could I could go on and on. Another one is precision and accuracy, right? Precision and accuracy is alive and well in the classroom and in the workplace. You know, going back to teamwork and collaboration, and, and you know this uh, because that's part of the culture of Crest, and it's part of the culture of just about any strong um, office or corporate environment. You know, the number one reason that people don't work out in a job is because they can't work with others and that we have to teach and instill this idea of teamwork and collaboration and what that looks like with our students. And, and by the way, we're continuing to do that even in a virtual environment um, via Zoom and, and, and Google Hangouts and, and Microsoft, uh, all of those, uh, it still applies directly and maybe even more so under those circumstances. So, you know, standard six, it gets at the core um, that the two programs need to be integrated and and we see it all the time. You know, we teach our students how to utilize uh, Excel, for example, knowing that Excel is used, Microsoft Excel, in many offices and many different work environments. And so we integrate that into our program and we ask our teachers when there's an opportunity to integrate that into their curriculum please do that and give students an opportunity to use Excel in the classroom, you know, whether it's uh, in a statistics class, a science class, a math class, or a social studies class. There are opportunities that abound to bring these crossover skills that are relevant in the workplace and the classroom together. Um, and it's emphasized constantly within our curriculum. So you mentioned, um, you know, adapting your curriculum to Zoom and Microsoft Teams and, you know, kind of the, the new educational environment that we're working in, um, hopefully temporarily. Um, but so let's talk a little bit about today's environment, especially as an educational institution. So, you know, how have your team and, and students adapted to the challenges and the uncertainty that COVID-19 has created? And, and I guess as a piggyback onto that, you know, what strategic investments do you see as important in this environment, uh, both internally to San Miguel as a high school, but also from the perspective of, you know, what you need from a Tucson community and, and Tucson employers? Yeah, uh, today's environment is without a doubt uh, the most unpredictable, disruptive, and challenging environment imaginable. And the key here is it's equally as disruptive challenging and unpredictable for our local business community and our schools and San Miguel does both. So um, it's an added layer uh, for the school for sure. 
Um, you know, first and foremost, because the stakes are so high and there's no precedent or playbook to follow or even common agreement on, on the best way to open up schools. Um, you know, this is where the San Miguel culture comes into play. First of all, the students and families we serve uh, are still at the core of our mission, as I, I said earlier. So COVID doesn't really change that for these recent curveballs and new conditions that we have to live by. It just means uh, that we have to continue to be proactive, creative, uh, and solutions focused in terms of delivering our mission, our high quality academic program and robust corporate work study experience. Although it'll look different, uh, of course, health and safety for everyone in our community is always first and foremost. Um, but going back to the three groups that we talked about earlier, students, faculty, staff, and corporate partners, the core of, of that triangle um, and where they intersect, uh, as hard as it is to open and run a school during COVID, you know, uh, ensuring a safe, healthy corporate and work study environment is, again, it's an added layer. Um, and when you consider that the corporate program accounts for about 40% of the cost of, you know, operations and the students' education. So the stakes are high in the respect that without that financial model or without our corporate partners, the model and the school is in, is in jeopardy. Um, luckily, I'm pleased to report that those partnerships are alive, alive and well. Um, and our remarkable corporate work study team is, is absolutely undaunted. Uh, and, and they're facing directly into the challenges. So, for example, when San Miguel opens in a few weeks in a remote learning environment, um, which is a unique academic model, which we had to implement last spring, many of our corporate partners will also be having students working remotely, um, doing remote work uh, either from home or from the school campus but continuing to fulfill their obligation uh, for the company while following the school's health and safety protocols, of course. Um, but what is remarkable, and, and this makes me so happy, is that our um, local Tucson business community has been unwavering in their support despite these challenges, despite a sputtering economy and, and all of the economic challenges that everybody's facing. Last week, for example, we had Zoom calls, Matt, with um, our corporate partners and, and those supervisors that will be working directly with our students in the workplace. And on the first Zoom call, we had 46 partners represented. And on the second Zoom call, we had 37, which is remarkable. Um, it, it, it's a level of participation and support that I might not have imagined at first. Um, but, you know, going back to your original question, it speaks to the idea that everybody understands uh, the commitment and why uh, this program is so special to our community. You know, at the end of the day, we're all in this together and that we have to work together as a community, which I think um, it is really, uh, it, it, it's, it runs in the fabric of Tucson. And it, it speaks to the culture of our local community. You know, whether you're a private school, public school, family, local business, um, we have to figure this out by working together um, because the stakes are so high. And if, if education is disrupted and opportunities are, are, are disrupted and not available, um, then the impact will be felt years down the road. And and so I'm, I'm humbled by what I've seen in terms of the school community rallying together to work with the local business community and have a cohesive plan to make sure that the mission continues. If you had to pick, because I think, you know, like you said, I mean, it is one of those things where uh, the businesses that get it, um, it's funny. I mean, I was really introduced to the San Miguel concept by, uh, by a client of mine that was a manufacturing company. And, um, the chief executive over there is a gentleman I respect a great deal. And he actually extended the invitation to me to come sit in on one of the San Miguel sessions. And, and basically his, his introduction to was very brief. He said, go check this out. You're going to like what you hear. Trust me. 
Um, and so I went in and I sat and I was, I, again, I was just blown away by, by what I saw. So I guess my question to you is for the employers that haven't heard about San Miguel, if, if you had to pick one thing that maybe, and maybe not just employers, but as a community that we kind of misunderstand about education and about youth and their entry into the workforce, what do you think that one thing that, that people misunderstand is and, and how would you kind of help coach them around it? Yeah, I think the number one the number one misconception is the ability of the students to learn and do outstanding work uh, in any corporate environment. You know, that was the big question back in the mid '90s when Father Foley opened the first school in Chicago, and they approached businesses in the Chicago business community, and and you know they thought that they were going to be laughed out of the building. You know what, you, you want me to hire a 14 year old to come into one of the largest uh, accounting firms in the, in the country and do real life, meaningful work. Um, you know, I think there's on, on the part of some still a misconception that it's, that it's charity and, and that they're kind of, you know, helping out the students, but that, you know, the students don't necessarily, you know, directly provide a service or, or meaningful work. And I say that couldn't be farther from the truth. Of course, those that work with us know that's not the case because they see what our students do on a regular basis. But, I, you know, I'm always very, very clear that, look, th this is an opportunity to have an impact and make a difference. But you're also getting uh, an amazing employee uh, despite the fact that they might be 14, 15, 16, or 17 years old. But not only that, um, and again, this, you guys know this at Crest better than anyone because you have current San Miguel interns, you have college students that are at the U of A that are working part-time because they're so excellent at what they do and so reliable. And then you have young professionals who have chosen to come back and work at Crest and and, and make that their career pathway. So you, you've got the grand slam at Crest uh, for having all three of those. But yeah, that's the one thing is, I hear it all the time. I cannot believe that this 14 year old or 15 year old is as productive as they are in the workplace in terms of what they're providing. And we know this is true because Tons of our students uh, are hired over their summer vacations um, to come back and work in the offices uh, where they've worked as San Miguel students, uh, and they get to keep that money they earn during summer vacation, and, and they're essentially asked to come back by their employer, even though they have no obligation to bring them back during summer vacation or Christmas vacation. And we get calls all the time to say, hey, we, can you send us a student, or we want more students. Um, so it's just just the capability of these young people and what what they can do in the workplace. Um, so have faith, and uh, you won't be disappointed. In fact, you'll be blown away. Would be my message. And I guess as we kind of you know come down to the to the bottom of the, uh, the well, actually to the top of the following hour. So to the end of our to the end of our hour, I guess I should say, um, and to tie it back to you know, this idea of purpose in the workplace. If I'm an employer and I hear what you're talking about and I say, hey, you know what, this sounds like um, both a, something that I can support from a purpose perspective within our community, but also something that I think, you know, I want our workplace to have these type of purpose-driven students in it. Um, enhancing our culture. How do they get involved with San Miguel? What's the what's the process of bringing a San Miguel student in like? Yeah, so uh, the first step is either um, go on our website, uh, www.sanmiguel.org or sanmiguelhigh.org, and um, there's a there's a link on there, uh, corporate work study program drop down at the top of the menu. And if you go to our website, uh, you can learn a little bit more, read a little bit more about the program. 
and then to reach out directly, there's a, a place uh, to email. Um, people are always welcome to reach out directly to me uh, at San Miguel High School uh, to call the high school and uh, speak with me. Uh, or our director of, of corporate work study is uh, Miss Samantha Miller um, at the school. And uh, we will set up a meeting and a time to, to talk about the particular workplace and the job description and, and how many students and all of that. Um, but I would encourage anybody, just like you did a few years ago, to come down to the school and uh, see it firsthand. Um, so we are always, always willing and excited to talk about a future corporate partner. Um, and we have this really wonderful um, plaque in the lobby of our school. Uh, we just redid it. It's brand new and it, it has a, a tile for every one of our um, 85 corporate partners here in town. And, and we would love to add more up there. Uh, and so, please reach out uh, to San Miguel High School and set up a, a tour or a meeting and we'll take it from there. Perfect. Well, Dave, thank you so much. Uh, first off for, you know, taking the time to, uh, to join us on the show today. Of course, uh, you know, the Crest as an organization, we are tremendously proud um, to both support San Miguel High School um, as an organization, uh, but also to have San Miguel students and, and alums um, among our among our workforce here, and, and then you know certainly uh, we enjoy a great working business relationship with your organization. Something that again we're very very proud of. Um, so first and foremost, thank you for for all of that, um, and then thank you for you know as an institution really kind of reminding us that um, to your point, you know, uh, talent is universal, opportunity is not, but that you know if you demand excellence. Um, that young people can rise to that calling because I think that is something that as a community we, we kind of can get lazy in our thinking sometimes as to what we expect of young people. That certainly was something that I learned um, in the military when I was, you know, dealing with kids that were you know, kids, you know, that were 17, 18 years old um, and, and really being amazed by what they were capable of when somebody really put that down and said, this is your charge, this is your purpose, I need you to meet this standard. It was incredible what people would do when they were really trusted with that responsibility. So thank you for that as well. And um, we'll have your contact information on the webpage as well. But, um, but again, thank you for joining us and to everybody listening. Thank you for, uh, thank you for joining us for another episode of culture at work in Tucson. Uh, I'm Matt Nelson and I'm signing off. We'll see you next month. Join Matt for another interesting culture at work podcast right here on Tucson business radio X dot com.